Good evening. We are starting a new week. And this one is the last week of this course. So we are um, going to end on Friday this uh, module. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. So we are going to end this course this week. It's it's really um kind of a uh, weird that uh, we may think that uh, it is like a short time, but at this moment we are uh, beginning the last week, so we are going to work today and tomorrow. You know that on Wednesday, we are not going to work because um, we have a special date and then we are going to work the last day of the week. So we are going to begin with this week and you know that we have some phrases for the first day of the week. So we are going to start with that. Uh, we are going to read the phrase um, that uh, I want to share with you because you know that I like to do that that kind of things uh, at the beginning of the week. And then we are going to uh, begin with the things that we are going to uh, learn today. And in this week, we are going to talk about past and future. Uh, so we are going to do reviews of um, past tenses and future tenses. Uh, we are going to um learn something else about um uh, words or phrases that we can use in past and we are going to do um some exercises that are on the platform because you know that at uh, this time good evening at this time you need to um, complete the uh, section number five that is the last section on the platform. And I know that some of you um, are on date with the work on the platform. So we are just going to make review of the exercises that we have there. And also on Friday, we are going to complete the final exam. Um, in the case that you have completed the final exam already, uh, we're just going to uh, read about the, the exercises and a lot of things just to, to make like a review of the exercises that we have on the platform. So we are going to begin with the phrase I was like I was saying, and then we're going to move or we're going to um, watch the intro video of the section number five. You know that uh, every, um, Every section has an uh, intro video, and now we are going to see the intro video of the last section, that is the section number five, that is the last of the course. So we're going to listen the information that we have there, and then we're going to begin uh, talking about the past, because that is the first uh, thing that we are going to do, is to talk about past and the past tenses and how can we use them, those past tenses. And at this point is going to be like a review of the topic because you know that um, the past is one of the, of the first topic that we develop when we are learning English. So in this case, we are going to make some uh, reviews of the topic. We are going to remember all the information that we have about the past because we are going to see the four different tenses that we have in past and we're going to see the uh, structures, some examples and all of that things. So now today we are going to begin with the topic of the past. I hope that we are going to see two of the, of the tenses. And I guess tomorrow we are going to see the other two and we are going to make some exercises related to the, the past. And then on when, I mean, on Thursday, we are going to see future. We are going to begin with future and we are going to do the same thing. We are going to begin with two of the tenses of the future. And then we are going to uh, 
to end on Friday with the other two. But also I have um, another thing that we are going to learn in, in this week related to, um, to that topic. In that case, we are going to use like some phrases or some uh, words that we can use in past. And in this case, I, I hope that we're going to see it maybe tomorrow. There are idioms about past. The idioms some, uh, are phrases like we can use to refer to some to some specific ideas, but using different words. But we're going to see that part tomorrow because it is related to the topic um, of the past. So we're going to see some idioms that are related to past. So now we have the phrase here. And this phrase said, if you don't make mistakes, you are not working on hard enough problems. And that is a big mistake. If you don't make mistakes, you are not working on hard enough problems. And that's a big mistake. In this case, it's related to the things that we, that we do in our lives. You know that we are not like perfect in everything. And the point of learning is to make mistakes and to understand uh, why we are making mistakes and also to solve those mistakes. Because sometimes we, we make a mistake and we say, oh, I am so miserable because I make a mistake and I cannot do anything. I am worthless and I don't have talent. And I am, and we say a lot of things about our job or our um, things that we are doing at that moment. But the thing is, that we need to make mistakes to understand how things are functioning. And also through mistakes, we are going to learn, we are going to gain more information, we are going to gain more experience, and we are going to do better things for our future. So if you are not making mistakes right now, you are not working on hard enough problems because in that case, they are too easy for you and you are like in your comfort zone, and that's okay. It's okay to, to be in a comfort zone, but you know that um, at some point you need to go outside and work on hard enough problems to gain more inf information, to gain more experience um, about life in general. And that is the big mistake because we are not like, um, giving the opportunity to the mistakes being made. And that is not something very bad. We are humans and we can make mistakes. Tell me, Emmanuel. I don't know if you want to say something, but I am not listening to, to you. If you want to tell me something, you can write on the chat because I don't know if it was a mistake to, to raise your hand. So, okay, we're going to continue. Let's see. Okay. Uh, we're going to continue with the intro video. We are going to go to the platform and we are going to listen the information that we have there. We are going to see what is the topic that we are going to, um, to hear on that video because we have four different videos uh, that we have seen before. And now we are going to see the last one of the intro videos. And in this case, it's shorter than the others, but we're going to uh, understand what is the meaning or uh, what is the information that they want to give to you. Because in the first one, we were talking about problems. And the second one, we were talking about environmental problems. 
And the third one, we were talking about techniques. And the number four, we were talking about, let me see, um, stress and how to solve the problems of stress and all of the things. And now we're going to listen what is the information in this um, video. So we're going to go to the platform and we're going to listen that video. So give me a second. So here we are. To finish this course, we want you to sit, relax, and watch the last video with us. Feel free to take notes as you watch it. Finally from us, the virtual office for better or worse technology and globalization are creating startling changes in what it means to be on the job. Betsy Stark is tracking the new order of business and tonight begins our series, The Future of Work. Imagine a work world with no commute, no corporate headquarters, maybe no office in the physical world at all. For Bob Flavin, Janet Hoffman, and Joseph Jaffe, the future is already here. These days we do so much stuff by teleconferences and things um, that it doesn't matter where you are. Like 42% of IBM's 350,000 employees, Bob Flavin rarely comes into an IBM office. We don't care where and how you get your work done. We care that you get your work done. On the day we met him, he was collaborating with computer scientists in British Columbia and Beijing from the on-call room of his local ambulance corps, where he works as a volunteer. You are in 6031. The workforce at the Accenture management consulting firm is so mobile, not even the CEO has an office with his name on the door. There's no corporate headquarters. No. If you need a workspace, you reserve it like a hotel room, checking in and out at a kiosk. Having a big desk is a sign of status with lots of family photos and, uh, you know, and, and carpeting that's fluffy and nice. Is, uh, that is, is a vision of the past. Come on into the theater. In the future, more companies with scattered workforces and clients may do what the crayon marketing firm has done and make their headquarters in cyberspace. Here's our little rooftop. We had our holiday party here. Crayon's workers rarely meet in the physical world. I am uh, in Boston today. And I am on Long Island today. But their alter egos in the virtual world gather once a week. We're here in, uh, in our boardroom, and uh, you're here actually at the tail end of a status meeting. I never met Crayon's CEO in person. There you are. But we spent a couple of hours together in cyberspace. Our belief is that if we bring like minds together, no matter where they are in the world, we can actually create that connectedness as if we're actually here at the same place at the same time. If what matters is what you do, not where you are, who needs an office? Betsy Stark, ABC News, Crayonville in cyberspace. And tomorrow, imagine having summers off every summer. That is World News for this Monday. I'm Kate Snow. For Charles Gibson and all of us at ABC News, have a good evening. Good night. Sorry. In this case, uh, you can understand through the information that we have on the video that we are talking about future. And if you can uh, see, there are like uh, no very um, recent video because it maybe it has a couple of years in which they are like trying to create this virtual space in which you are going to work from your house or even from um, different space, but you are going to um, have your work done and at that moment, it was like just a dream, just uh, something 
um, that they wanted to um, to gather at that moment. But now you you can see that we are uh, making that virtual space. Uh, in this moment, you are not working, but you are listening to someone that is not at the same place as you, because we are from different places and we are not in the same city or something like that. And that is the thing that they were saying on the video. They were like creating this, uh, or, yes, this is space in which they are going to have meetings um, through the virtual spaces, through the computer, through a program and all of the things, but they are going to have this meeting and they are going to work and spend some hours uh, working and being productive. That is the, the point. But now, uh, after the, the pandemic, we implement that situation in which we're going to, to work from our houses and we need to serve for solutions. And in this case, it's to work through a computer in which you are going to have a lot of people uh, watching you and you are going to talk and you are going to uh, show something and you are going to complete some task and all of that things. So in that case, it's not like a very um, long future. And in this case, it's like a very, very, now it's not future, it's just present because we are uh, doing those uh, things in our nowadays lives. And in that video is like a dream, but now you know that it is not like that. But we are just going to talk about future So give me a second. So we're going to begin because I was telling you that we are going to talk about past and future. But first to talk about a uh, future, we are going to uh, talk about past. And for that, we are going to um listened a um, conversation but first i have three questions for you let me show the screen and i'm going to write the questions and then we are going to listen a conversation in which they are going to um give the answers so in this case, we have the following questions. Number one, do you know when World War One began? Number two, how long has the United Nations been in existence? And number three, how long were the Beatles together for? So we have three different questions, but in those questions, we are talking about past. Um, some of you uh, has the answer for some of these questions. Who knows the answers? For example, for the number one, do you know when World War I began? Someone uh, has that information or has an idea? If I am not. Tell me, Ian Manuel. in 1914 if i am not mistaken okay we have an idea 1914 
Just remember the date that Emmanuel said, 1914. Uh, someone else has an idea about the, the other answers? We have just one answer and we're going to listen to the conversation to see if the answer is correct. Let's see. Okay, we have two uh, people that is saying that in 1914, the question number one. For example, how long were the Beatles together for? Who knows that information? For an idea of how many years they were like together? We can guess in this case, we can guess how many years. Ten years. Maybe. In years, we have an, uh, an answer for the Beatles. Ten years. So in the first one, I'm going to write the year and this one, how many years? Ten years. We have these ones. So we're going to go again um, to the platform and we are going to listen to the conversation. On that conversation, they are going to give you the information or the answer for those questions. So we need to pay attention because we are going to see uh, the first part of the conversation and the second part, we're just going to listen. So. We are going to go to the platform again, and I'm going to share with you the video in which they are talking about those questions. The conversation is called, I'm good at history. So let's go. Look, here's a quiz on part A. This Give me a second, I'm putting. And practice. Part A. And let's go. Listen and practice. Look, here's a quiz on events of the 20th century. Oh, let me give it a try. I'm good at history. All right. First question. When did World War I begin? I think it began in 1917. Huh. And how long has the United Nations been in existence? Uh, since Kennedy became president in 1961. Hmm. Next question. How long were the Beatles together? Well, they started in 1965 and broke up in 1980, so they were together for 15 years. So, how am I doing so far? Not very well. Not one of your answers is correct. We want you to stay and listen to the rest of the conversation and find out the correct answers for the questions we asked at the beginning. So, what are the correct answers then? Well, World War I began in 1914 and ended in 1918. Oh, that's right. And the United Nations was formally established in 1945, following the end of World War II. And the Beatles? Well, they started back in 1960 and they broke up in 1970. So they were together for 10 years, not 15. Did I say I was good at history? Uh, I meant geography. So we have the, the conversation in where they were like making a short quiz in which they are like asking some questions related to history. And we have the first one that is the World War I. 
And that is correct, the day that you said, they, um, or oh, that were, was in 1914 uh, and ends in the 1918. Then they say, uh, how long has the United Nations been in existence? And the number three, how long were the Beatles together for? And you have the uh, correct answer, 10 or 10 years. So in that case, we were like, listening something about um, events on the past. So now that is the beginning of the topic that we are going to develop right now. And I was saying at the beginning that we're going to see the four tenses that we have in past and in future. So we are going to begin with that part and we are going to see the four tenses that we have on the past. You know that in this case, we have the past simple or simple past, past continuous, past perfect, and also past perfect continuous. So we are going to develop the first one that is the simple past. But you know that this is just a, a review of the topic. So we are going to begin with the, this one and we are going to work it like a review. Past tenses. Number one, simple past. So in this case, we're going to begin with the forms. And in this case, we have regular verbs. And in this case, we're going to um, work with a specific information. We are just going to make like or take just the, the most relevant information about the, the different chances. And we are going to make like um, a complete information, a whole information about the tenses, but doing in short parts or having short information, we're not going to have a lot of things. So for the first thing that we need to know are the regular verbs. that in this case, we have the base form of the verb plus ed. That is something that we already know that we have the regular and irregular verbs. And with the regular verbs, we are going to add ed at the end of the, of the base form of the verb. And we have some examples. We have walked. We have showed. Watch, played, smiled, stopped, and for the irregular verbs. We are going to see a table with some examples. And for this one, we're going to see simple past of B. Have and do. So we are going to see this one because in this case, we are just using this three one because uh, you know they are the most used in past because we can use it as auxiliaries when we are creating uh, sentences in past. One, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, four. Okay, so in this case, we have the subject. 
Then we have B, have and do. We are going to make this a little shorter. So we are going to have it like this. So in this case, we have I, you, third person, he, she, it, we, you in plural, and they. So in this case, we have the verb to be in past, was, where, was, where, and where. Then we have the past of have. In this case, is the same for every subject. And also we do in past D for all of the subjects. But you know that in the case of the irregular verbs or the irregular verbs, uh, the, the verbs that we can easily recognize are the regular verbs because they are very, very easy to understand that you are just going to add the ed at the end of the verb. And also in some cases you're going to uh, double some consonants in some of the verbs. But in the irregular verb, you know that you need to change the form of the verbs. And in some cases, uh, we have some a verbs that are the same in past as in present, but you are going to see like the meaning through the context of the, uh, the message or the information that you are giving to the others. So in this case, we're going to see some affirmative sentences. We're going to see some examples. And we have here different uh, statements. I was in Japan. I was in Japan. And we're going to use like phrases that it can um, like reinforce the information that we have about the past in this case. Um, there are phrases related to the time in this case in past. I was in Japan last year. She had a headache yesterday. We did our homework last night. The negative and interrogative. So in this case, for the negative, the negative and for the interrogative, um, we are going to use the auxiliary did. So in that case, we are going to work with the auxiliary did. That's why we uh, saw um, the verb do on the table because you know that when we are working um, with negatives and with questions, we're going to use that auxiliary verb. They are very common to use do in the past, in this case, did for making negative and for making question. You know that we can create question with was and where. And also with WH words, but they are very, very common to use the auxiliary need. And also we can use the, uh, 
the verb have in past as an auxiliary in this case. But in this, it's very common just to use not for the for the sentences. So we are going to see some examples. So in this case, we have, they were not, in this case, we're using just the verb to be, they were not in Rio last summer. We hadn't any money. In this case, we're using they had. We hadn't any money. We didn't have a time to visit the Eiffel Tower. In this case, we are like, we're going to use the auxiliary the end. We didn't have time to visit the Eiffel Tower. Then we didn't do our exercises this morning. Were they in Iceland last January? Were they in Iceland last January? Did you have a bicycle when you were a boy? Did you have a bicycle? I mean, bicycle. When you were a boy, Did you do much climbing in Switzerland? So there we have some examples in which we're applying um, the auxiliaries and the verbs in past to create negative statements and questions. And we're going to uh, have all the, the structures in one place. So let me do the table. I need three. I need 12 of these ones. And I'm going to create the structures. I'm going to write all the structures in one place. So let's see. In this case, we're going to have the affirmative. And in this case, we have the uh, structure subject and the verb plus ed. And we have an example. I wash. And we can add a complement at uh, the shirt. And we have the sentence, very simple. Then we have negative. 
And we have a subject plus did not. Then we have infinitive without to. In this case, when we are going to use the, the verbs, uh, the infinity form of the verbs, we are not going to use the to because in that case, um, it is not necessary because you are using the auxiliary and all of that thing. So it is not necessary to use the to. They didn't. They didn't visit my mother. Then we have interrogative. And here we have the, the auxiliary D plus subject plus infinity without two. And we have the example, did she arrive at the hotel? And we have the statement. And the last one, interrogative negative. And we have did not subject and again infinity without two. Didn't you like? Did you like fish? And we have our uh, structures and some example of those um, structures. So in this case, I'm going to mark this one because they are the, the structures. So I'm going to write some other examples of this part. And we're going to see like um, examples with irregular, example with irregular, and then the function of the, the simple past. And then we're going to see the past continuous. So we're almost done with the simple past. So we're going to see some examples with, um, with regular verbs. In this case, we have affirmative, negative, and interrogative, but we are just going to uh, use one a verb. In this case, we're going to have three different examples because in that case, we're just using uh, the verb walk and we're going to do a positive statement, a negative statement and a question. I walked on the beach. Then in the negative, I didn't walk. on the beach. And for the question, did I walk, I mean, walk on the beach? And for the negative, interrogative negative, did not 
or didn't I walk on the beach? So in this case, for all of the, for the negative and interrogative forms, uh, for all verbs, we're going to use the auxiliary did that indicates that we are just uh, using did, but when you are going to use the verb to be is, in that case, you are going to use was and were, but in this case, uh, you need to use the auxiliary did. And we're going to see some example with irregular verbs. And we are going to uh, see positive, negative, and question. For the first one, we have to go. He went to a club last night. Did he go to the cinema? last night and the negative he didn't go to bed early last night then we have to give that is the verb and we have the positive statement we gave her a doll for her birthday. Then question, did Barry give you my passport? Did Barry give you my passport? And negative. They didn't give you their new address. They didn't give John their new address. Yes. And the last one to come. My parents came to visit me last July. My parents came to visit me last July. Interrogative. Did he come to your party last week? Did he come to your party last week? And for the negative, we didn't come because it was raining. We didn't come because it was raining. So what is the function? I mean, what is the function of the simple past? It says that the simple past is used to talk about a complete action in a time before now. The duration is not important. The time of the action can be in present past or distant past. So in this case, we're going to use the simple past when we're talking about um, action that finish on the past, but uh, the Duration is not related or relevant to the information that we're um, expressing. So in that case, we're just uh, going to talk about some situation in the past, but we're not going to focus on the time that action passed. So it can be our recent past, like a year ago, or it can be like, um, distant past like in 1948 or something like that.
and the last examples. We have here, John Cabot sailed to America in 1498. 1498. My father died last year. He lived in Fiji in 1976. In 1976. We crossed the channel yesterday. And we always use the simple past when you say when something happened. So it is associated with certain past time expressions. And in that case, it's related to words or phrases of frequency like often, sometimes, always, a definite point in time, last week, when I was a child, yesterday, six weeks ago, and a definite point in time in other day, age ago, a long time ago, and other time expressions. So in that case, we can use some time expressions to reinforce the information that we have about the past. Now we're going to begin with the past continuous, that is the number two. And in this case, we have that the past continuous of any verb is composed in two parts. The past tense of the verb to be, that is, was and were, and the base of the main verb in plus I and G. In this case, we're going to focus on two main parts, that the first one is the verb to be in past, and the second one, is the main verb of our sentence or our statement plus the ing. We are going to use gerund for this structure. So in that case, we have two parts, verb to be and the verb with the uh, ing. So in this case, we have the structure. We have the subject plus was and where, or was and where, plus the verb, uh, or in this case, we can uh, say base plus ing. And we have the example, they, then we're going to apply the was and where, in this case, we're going to use where, they were watching, what television? And that is the statement. So then we have the other structures, and in this case, we're going to insert a table in which we're going to it write all of the structures. 
And in this case, we are not going to use it like in the other that we have the example. In this case, we are just going to have the, uh, the sentence. In this case, we are going to have the example and we are not going to have the structure. For the affirmative, we have the following example. She was reading a book. So that is a structure. The subject plus was and where plus the base verb uh, in ing and the complement. Then for the negative, we have she wasn't or was not reading a book. For the interrogative, we have was at the beginning, the verb to be as the beginning, she, the subject, the base, form of the verb plus ing and complement, reading a book and the question mark. And the last one is interrogative negative. Again, we're going to begin with the verb to be, was not, in this case, wasn't, she reading, a book. And then we have the, the structures that we are going to use for the um, past continuous. They are almost the same with the uh, simple past, but in this case, we are just going to use the base form of the verb plus the ing. So in this case, we're using the gerund of the verb. And we're using like uh, the verb to be as the auxiliary in this case. And we're going to have another examples. And we're going to have one of these. I am, I was playing, I mean, I was playing soccer. Then negative, I was not playing. Soccer. And the question was I playing soccer. So tomorrow we are going to see the functions of the past continuous. We are going to um, learn about the functions. We are going to see some examples and then we are going to begin with the past perfect in also, we're going to study past perfect continuous, but uh, we're going to do that tomorrow because now it's time to end the session and we're going to end session number one of this last week. So we're going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night and see you. Good night, good night everyone. Bye. Good night.